There is an opinion that there is some phenomenon of the rise of Rome. There were a bunch of peoples in the Mediterranean, and then suddenly the Romans took and conquered them all. From the pages of a history book it looks like that. Moreover, the reasons of Rome's victory in the Italian Viper in many realities were caused by its unique features of the structure. But there is nothing phenomenal in the victory of Romans over other competitors for hegemony in the Mediterranean. And now I will explain what is the matter. Actually, the question of establishing hegemony over the Mediterranean has been in the air for a long time. When the first Romans were just climbing out of their huts to beat the Sabines, in the east of the Mediterranean already 500 years ago there was a fight, and one after another in the region rolled another war for the establishment of hegemony. The reasons for this were simple. There is always a neighbor who has something you need, or your neighbor has a desire to take away from you something he needs. Therefore, for quite objective reasons, everyone cut everyone for the sake of the greater good. In the times we are interested in, the main contender for the reunification of the Mediterranean was Persia. Persians in general are handsome, and long before these your Romans have created the huge empire with tens millions inhabitants. Only this empire was very clumsy and spent too much time and resources on digestion. But it could field a huge army of infantry and pile up corpses, which was cheating against most competitors. The problem for the Persians in their expansion was the Greeks. Besides the fact that they had colonized the entire Mediterranean with their colonies, they also actively interfered in the affairs of Persia, which colonies in Asia Minor interfered with. And it would be all right, but the Greeks were quite desperate. Three hundred years they constantly fought with each other, thanks to which so pumped military skills that united against the Persians organized a real jihad. As a result, the Persians, instead of killing the Greeks, began to quarrel them with each other, and we must admit very successfully, so that they could not unite more effectively. And in the meantime, Persia slowly gobbled up everything that lay badly and slowly digested. It is safe to say that the Persians for two hundred years selflessly helped the Greeks not to unite into something decent. And then that plan had a complete failure since the Persians were not the only ones who were smart, and among the military bosses of the Greeks were those who understood what divide and conquer was all about. The Macedonians did not show their faces in Greece for a long time, being savage semi-barbarians from the northern frontier. At the expense of this they managed to accumulate forces and began to conquer their neighbors. Only unlike the Persians their strategies were built not on we will wait for the right moment to strike as long as necessary. But on, we need everything and now. Literally for the life of one generation, Macedonia, from an omega turned into an alpha, which captured half of Greece and the other half forced to peace, delegitimized Persia, along the way breaking the armies of all its neighbors, invaded India, where too all who met beaten and promised to return collapsed into several smaller states. And that was a real phenomenon. For the same Romans, the rise and fall of the Macedonian Empire was literally instantaneous and in no way unprovoked. Just a miracle, as was its decline. But at the same time, if earlier in the East was one challenger for hegemony, now they were from up to five large and many small, and all declared the goal of restoring the power of Alexander in its full size. And this was no joke. As a result, the region was a constant struggle between everyone and everyone with the ultimate goal of defeating everyone and regaining power over the entire East. On what is happening there in the West, the Greeks did not pay attention at all, as there are only wild barbarians live there. And this Rome was very lucky. It was isolated in its starting region from aggressive professionals with the experience of the game in three hundred years. The barbarian territories and the sea safely separated Italy from other centers of power, and it was also poor enough to pay any close attention to it. All major regional competitors were approximately equal to Rome, and distant Carthage was too far away and was in the same conditions, which, by the way, brought Rome closer together and led to the division of spheres of influence. Rome's goal at this stage was simple, to survive, to make a profit on its neighbors and unite Italy under its sandal. After that, Rome found itself in a barbarian vacuum. All the nearest territories available for expansion are occupied by barbarians, the conquest of which requires significant costs with very small earnings at first. 
The only worthy target for conquest was Sicily, but it was also the point of contact between Rome and Carthage, and therefore it was a long-established status quo. But the status quo was successfully buried by King Pyrrhus. He was a miner with major ambitions. He wanted nothing less than to revive the good old Macedonian Empire. But since he would not succeed in the East, he decided that in the West he could get resources for further war with the Majors. So he flies into Italy and Sicily, ruins the status quo there, gets such a defeat from the Romans that he suddenly realizes that Rome is stronger than it seemed, after which he takes this knowledge to his grave almost immediately. In Greece no one noticed this incident in principle, as the respected gentlemen had much more important problems, let the cockroaches in the West fuss, eat each other, and we, while old scores will settle and once again arrange a fight for a hundred thousand military for shifting the border on a couple of tens of kilometers. But for the west of the Mediterranean this event was decisive. Both Rome and Carthage realized that the walls of their worlds are permeable, and another invader from the east can fly in at any moment. Therefore it was crucial to establish complete control over all strategic points, and it just so happened that for both Rome and Carthage, Sicily was it. Yes, and without Pyrrhus, the Romans and Puni would have clashed with each other, but the man catalyzed the process. The question of who would get the whole west of the Mediterranean rose to the agenda by itself, as there were no other competitors in the region, and the conflict would have spread across it. And since it was dangerous for both powers to expand to the east at that moment, they clashed with each other. And what about the Greeks? They didn't give a damn, you won't believe it. The old conflicts did not go anywhere, and therefore the wars went on as scheduled. True, before the second Punica Carthage tried to draw Macedonia into its game, and since the Macedonians clearly did not fully understand the real strength of the Romans, they happily agreed in case of what to hit Rome in the back. It came out really not very much, as Rome simply destroyed the Macedonians, and exactly at the moment when the full received from Hannibal and not even legionaries and marines, do you think the Macedonians learned from their mistake? No. They did not have an epiphany even after Rome defeated Carthage and annexed most of its possessions to itself. Indeed, few people in Greece realized how huge and powerful Rome had become. And here the balance of power began to play not in favor of the East. If altogether Eastern contenders for hegemony were much stronger than Rome, united the West, but separately they were weaker. And here the Romans, not being fools, began to use their trump cards. Greeks ate, in fact, not even the Romans, but the Greeks themselves, who willingly accepted the help of Rome in their wars, and then found that the blood they shed and the cream all removed Rome, and so on and so forth. The degree to which the Greeks are unlearned in this case is astonishing, and there was no phenomenon at all in all this, just a bit of luck, a little bit of intelligence, and a lot of sweat and blood. And that was it. It would take Rome only 150 years to devour the eastern Mediterranean, which is only 100 years more than it took the Macedonians to do the same. But this was a plus. The Romans had time to digest the conquered, unlike them. And if the Romans long delayed with the beginning of military action, and did not have time to the end of the third century to capture Italy, or end the war with Hannibal Draw, the East had every chance to see the formation of one or two regional hegemons that could compete with Rome. It's just that the Romans had time to be the first to reach a new level of the game, while the rest of us were self-consciously chopping in the sandbox 